Hi there, Brennan from the Zanarin Project here. Just thought I'd make a video showing you the behemoth and some of its features and some of the things it printed out. So let's take a look at what it's made of. The core is a four inch by four inch by quarter inch diameter uh, thickness aluminum square tube. On this end, there's a fan that is pushing the air out. So it's pulling the air through the tube. And on the other end, we have the ramps controller that's on an angle inside. Let's see if I can get a view of it here. You can see it in there. So it's up against the wall and the airflow pushes and cools the ramps controller. Just got the uh, an LCD controller that I wired up here. One of my own with an encoder and follow the instructions to modify the firmware. On this one, I'm running Marlin firmware. I'm probably going to try Repetite on it. I've tried that on some of my other printers and I like it. So let's go with some of the components here. The Y-axis has a NEMA 17 stepper motor. And you can see there's the gear right there. And there's an idler right here and then an idler on the other side and the stepper belt runs inside and the idlers twist. The idlers are actually running on, instead of bearings, I'm just using, this is a piece of, um, of HDPE that I milled down to fit inside the holes. So it's probably about, um, I don't know, three quarters of an inch or half an inch diameter at least. That's um, uh, the pulleys are running on, and it's slippery enough that it doesn't create any extra friction, and uh, it's actually working quite well. The belt is held on on both ends by these um, tensioners I added here. The bed has 10 millimeter hardened steel shafts. Um, they're from Fastenal. They're linear shafting, so they're supposed to be pretty straight. These are LM10. UU um, bearings, the flange bearings, I might, they might be the LMK, I can't remember. Um, so there's basically two on either side and the same configuration on the back. And the Y sled slides very nicely on these. And there's, there's no play up and down on the axis at all. It, it holds them very nicely. It was a little tricky to get it adjust the, all the screws and everything tightened down. So it was adjusted without uh, very much friction, but I was able to do it and um, get it um, adjusted. So it, um, there was very little friction in the system. Right now the bed, I've got uh, a couple different configurations for the bed. The small one um, on here right now is for ABS. I did have this heater on a big piece of glass, but I found out that that doesn't work very well and you'll actually end up with um, a broken piece of glass. First time I've ever broken glass, but I broke glass and I think it was just because the glass extended all the way out here and then all the way to those back screws. So it was just, um, if you heat just one area of the glass, it expands and then it, it cracked and um, it caused me grief and that was at the high temperature for ABS, I was trying to heat it to probably 110 degrees. So, um, I know uh, I just had to switch back to this, um, this smaller um, RepRap uh, Prusa sized um, printing bed until I can buy another piece of glass and I'll switch back and use PLA for that. So I've been printing the PLA directly on the glass with the PVA to water solution mixture, that's working good. For the ABS, I'm using PET tape with the uh, ABS juice on it. Uh, that works really well. Um, it's really a mess up there right now. The the the, um, the ABS juice I have has evaporated quite a bit, so it's thicker and it makes a mess putting it on. So the um, the bed is held up by these three quarter inch by or sorry, they're half inch by half inch uh, aluminum angle that runs all the way across. To the other platform on the other side and surprisingly enough it's very solid and doesn't really have any uh, flex at all there's no flex really acting on a on a printer anyways because it's it's not the head's not pushing down or exerting any force on the bed so 
you know, I mean, it will, there's springs here, so it will deflect if you crash the head into it and um, save you grief there, but there's really no um, forces acting on it, so it doesn't have to be beefy like, say, a CNC router or a mill or something like that. Um, so we'll move on to the Z axis right now. There's two steppers that drive the Z. They're both inside uh, the tube so the fan actually cools all the steppers on the inside as well there is uh, three steppers on the inside the 2z and the y axis so there is um, I'm using a 3 8 inch by 12 pitch um, Acme screws with um, dumpster CNC couplings and a 3 8 inch anti backlash um, nuts I bought these off of eBay and uh, same thing on the other side here for the um, for the linear rails for the Z axis, I wanted to make them really um, beefy, so I used 12 millimeter hardened steel um, hardened steel uh, rails or hardened steel sorry uh, shafting, and it um, it's very hard and it was very straight. And I'm using these couplers or these um, these um, um, I can't remember what they're called flange couplers or um, and then there's one here and then one uh, on the bottom on the inside oriented um, 90 degrees to this one same thing on this side right here now the bed that everything is running on it's a piece of uh, 3 quarter inch MDF that I CNC routed and had all the holes drilled um, and then I painted it with this black um, bed liner for that's used for trucks uh, it's, it comes in a little spray can it's not too thick it, but it makes a really hard it, it'll stick to it, anything I've tried any kind of metal anything it sticks to anything and it doesn't come off and it, it makes a nice uh, industrial finish so that's what I used for that and it, it, it makes a nice finish and then I've got the LMK 12 U's um, on either side so this thing this thing is solid I mean there's no play in this axis and it, it's rock solid um, it doesn't move at all and I'll go through some of the prints after to show you how big you can print with it and um, how nice the layer alignment is so uh, again on the x-axis here is just a NEMA 17 with the GT2 belts and the um, the pulleys and I designed uh, this is um, a linear a linear rail and it's very nice on this axis again there's no play on it and it uh, slides extremely uh, easily and it gives me probably about I think we're somewhere around 33 34 centimeters on the X and I think we're about 36 centimeters of travel on the Y and I can get about 40 centimeters high on the Z if I um, if I max it out right to the top so I could probably even get a little bit more but I'll just say 40 centimeters for now so I'm using a um, this extruder head it was designed by TSC Dan quite a while ago I used it on the Prusas it's just awesome it uh, basically you can flip up these two screws they've got springs on the other side here flip it up and you can do your your filament changes just by pulling the filament out feeding it back in again you can adjust the tension and it's just a matter of pushing these down and it makes a really super easy fast filament change and I've got a fan right here to cool um, the uh, help cool the peak and cool the um, the extruder head and the stepper and everything like that behind there that works pretty well these fans on the side right here they're used for cooling PLA and uh, they do a really good job they're angled and I can get really good coverage on it I've been able to print some really nice um, PLA prints with it and I'll show you those in a second and then the cabling just kind of comes down into a nice clean bundle it goes down to the back and there's some still I need to I still haven't finished the end stops on the X and the Y and um, you know I could clean up some of the heated print bed uh, cabling but what I want to do is kind of I've been waiting I've been wanting to order a bigger heated bed um, and then I'm going to uh, build a probably build a glass plate plate around that and then maybe clean up some of the wires so let's take a look at some of the things that I've printed with it um, this was a Yoda head look at the overhang on those ears it's pretty incredible turned out really well 
Here's the stretchy bracelet. Very flexible. Alignment was great. I think this one was a this one was a, a reject, so that's why I still have it. The other ones my daughters and my wife have. Um, this one just the first layers didn't stick very well. Here's a rocket I printed out. I think this one actually had fill in it. Whereas this one had no fill. And there was I think two one or two layers with this one. I've got a 0.35 millimeter nozzle on the behemoth right now. Here's a light bulb. Printed out. It's a good test for retraction. I think I could print it out even better now. I was printing this, I printed this one out at too hot of a temperature. Here's a really nice um, I forget what it's called. I should, I should make a note to myself not to make these videos after uh, after a mentally challenging day at work. Sorry about that. I had a brief interruption from the wife. Here is one of the taller objects. I one of the the golf end tornado. You can see this one. I think was printed with uh, two shells. It's probably about I don't know, 24 centimeters tall, something like that. Here's some um, the die grid bracelets. Another good test for retraction. They turned out nicely. And here's the tallest rocket I've built to date. I know lame sound effects, but this is it. It's printed out in three sections. There's this section all the way up to right here. So you can see, pull back, you can see it's quite tall. And then this section all the way up to where the nose cone starts. I think the whole thing's about 780 centimeters tall. It's actually made to fit a D-size motor. <laughs> and and the nose cone comes off and I've actually flown one of these before a smaller one I printed out in four or five pieces on a Prusa and it it uh, flies quite well so I'll, I'll try launching this one in the summer let's see here some of the other uh, things I printed out were uh, I printed out the the gear bearing this one's will like spin forever it's very smooth And some of the things that show, um, there's a, one of the pyramids I printed out. I just have to be careful that I'm pulling stuff that was printed with the behemoth. Um, then there's um, hollow cube. So it, um, it does incredibly well with really, um, you know, with, uh, layer alignment and with um, small objects and it does really well with big objects. One of the biggest objects I've um, printed was just a, a test for, let me just put the hang on there, a test for the bed. You can see that's about, um, I think it's like 30 by 30. Um, I just wanted to test the big print bed and see if I could um, maintain a, actually get the layer to stick and then maintain a, a decent, um, height all the way around and it worked out quite well. I um, think it measured um, very accurately so I mean it's kind of impractical to print something out really tall that size because it would take forever but if you could, you could print something out you know fairly uh, with a fairly low layer height and it's reasonable um, you know to print it out. I, I really don't I'm not a big fan of really long prints anything that takes over five hours I tend to shy away from. I like to uh, make the I like to do prints usually like three hours or it, it gets to be a little long for me I know there's guys that do them for uh, quite a long time but there's a it, it's I, I'm I um, I just I guess I'm impatient <laughs> I just don't have the the uh, the, the patience to uh, sit around and wait but that being said if I needed to um, 
if I needed to uh, um, make a big print, I'd do it. And the behemoth is definitely capable of it. So I think that's a pretty good overview of the behemoth and some of the things I printed out. Uh, I forgot to mention that's the power supply hooked up to it. It's just a 430 watt Corsair power supply. And that's heating uh, the ramps is a 1.4 ramps um, with a pull of the drivers. It's the Ultimachine ramps. And uh, yeah, so that's about it. That's uh, an overview of the behemoth and some of the things I've printed out with it and kind of deciding um, it, it, it worked out so well. And, and when I compare it to other printers out there, it, it, it's so easy to, it's so easy to build. The components are readily available and it's so accurate and it's it's just a solid machine that works better than I, I ever hoped it would. I, I was very skeptical when I first started building it. I wasn't sure how well it would work out and how, how good the prints would turn out, but um, you can see the results are, are really good. And what, what I really like about it is the ability to print at such a high height and, at, and the ability to print such a, a large on the X and the, on the Y. So for me, this uh, printer turned out way better than I ever could have hoped it, it would have. I'm super happy with the results and I'm kind of deciding right now if I want to do anything more with it to uh, let other people enjoy the design because it really has worked out well and I, like I say, I, I really, um, it, it's my go-to printer now for everything. So, and I've been playing with this Raw Stock Max printer. It's out of service, the belts are worn and I'm waiting for new belts and and gears for that and uh, you know I have the 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 Znar and Prusas and those those are really nice I mean the downside is the build volume it's uh, 200 by 200 by 110 I think on this one so I mean they're they're a great printer they print really nice um, but I wanted something that was um, more flexible with a larger build volume and definitely achieved it with the behemoth anyhow thanks for watching and if you like this video please subscribe have a good one